Okay, this is 2009, question two. Um, a student was assigned the task of determining the molar mass of an unknown gas. The student measured the mass of a sealed 843 milliliter rigid flask, so that's a volume that contained dry air. The student then flushed the flask with the unknown gas, resealed it, and then measured the mass again. Both the air and the unknown gas were at 23 degrees Celsius and 750 torr. The data for this experiment are shown below. What is the volume of the sealed flask? What is the mass of the flask with air in it? And what's the mass of the flask with the unknown air in it? First question, calculate the mass of dry air that was in the sealed flask, and they gave you the density. Um, I think the easiest way to do this problem um, is to use the density formula. It's one of the first things you learn in AP Chem. Um, and so um, density is mass over volume. Um, and if you turn this into a proportion and take cross products, um, you will see that mass is equal to density times volume. They gave us the density. They gave us the volume. Um, this is a very easy calculation, 1.18 grams per liter times 0.843 liters and then liters cancels with liters and if you do this on a calculator it will say um, so 1.18 sorry 1.18 times 0.843 and pound away on my calculator my calculator actually says 0.99 474 grams, but here's sig fig. This guy has three. This guy has three. Um, they probably only want you to keep three. Um, so I'm saying best answer to this question is 0.995 grams. I'm going to flip back and forth to the scoring guidelines because really what's important is that you study how to do these problems. Um, mass equals density times volume. There's the density, there's the volume, there's the answer. We match. That's good. Okay, question B, I wrote on the next page, calculate the mass in grams of the sealed flask itself as if it had no air in it. Interesting, they gave you the mass of the sealed flask and dry air, and then right here we got the mask of the dry air. And this is the first time you're going to see this. If you don't know how to do problem A, you don't know how to do it, you know that you have to use the problem A to, um, you have to use the answer for problem A and B. Make up an answer for problem A that makes sense. Um, in other words, don't say it's a million grams. But And if you use it right, um, they won't mark you wrong twice. If you use the wrong answer in A correctly in B, you still get the points for B. So 157.70, so 157.70 grams is what the flask weighs with air in it. And then if you subtract off the mass of the air, minus air, I mean, this is simple algebra. Flask plus air minus air is equal to the mass of the flask. Now, when you subtract, you count decimal points, 157.70 minus 0.995. My calculator actually says um, 156.705. It says 156.705 grams. However, this is good to the hundredth, this is good to the thousandth, or this is good to two decimal places, this is good to three, it's only good to two. Best answer to this question is 156.71 grams. Flipping to the scoring guidelines, which are on line 156.71 uh, grams. Uh, next one, calculate the mass in grams of the unknown gas. And the reason, again, the answer in B is used in C, because on this data table over here, we know that the flask and the unknown gas is 158.08. So the mass of the flask and the unknown gas, so 158.08. This is flask plus unknown gas. And up here, we just figured out 
that the flask alone without anything in it is 156.71 grams. Um, so this is the flask. Again, algebra, flask plus air minus air is flask. Um, flask plus unknown gas minus flask is the mass of the unknown gas. On my calculator, 158.08 minus 156.71 is 1.37 grams. Um, I would like to just stop for a minute and make this point because it's going to be important that, switching colors, um, the mass of the unknown gas is larger because that's going to have to come up Here's the mass of the gas over here on this problem. Oops, wrong thing, sorry. Um, 0.995 is smaller than 0.137. So as we go on to the rest of this problem, I want you to know that um, um, the fact that um, the unknown, the unknown gas, Um, weighs more, has more mass, weighs more than air. Or it's more dense than air, whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm um, going to guideline, scoring guidelines again. They're over here on the AP website, 1.37 grams. Um, now here's where it gets tricky, and you're going to see that I do things a little different, but it doesn't matter. You just have to get the right answer. I don't actually mind the way um, that they do it and also these formulas are on your sheet so next page using the information above calculate the molar mass of the unknown gas now here's kind of the thought process um, we've done molar mass a ton in here and molar mass units are grams per mole and then the most important um, equation um, in this chapter, in the gas law chapter, is pervnert because the, the mole is the most important concept in all of chemistry. Um, you will find this on your formula sheet. You won't find this. Actually, you may find this, the fact that molar mass units are grams per mole. Um, but I like to use my favorite equation. I call it the Mr. T conquers over perv. So I would like to derive it for you quickly. Um, let's use purple just for fun. Um, so what happens is there's other ways to do this. You can see this on the scoring guidelines, but um, interesting. Um, the most important concept in all of chemistry is the mole. Well, how do you get moles? You take mass divided by molar mass. Um, and so what we're going to do is in this equation, we're going to do M over molar mass. So everything's the same. P's the same, V's the same, R's the same, T's the same. We're just substituting mass divided by molar mass is how you would convert. You know, if you're in grams and you want to get to moles, you take, you know, let's say you had two grams of water and you wanted to know how many moles that was. Well, there's 18.02 grams of water in one mole of water. I mean, we've done this a bazillion times. It's mass divided by molar mass. And so what happens is on this equation, if you take cross products, you get PV molar mass, I call it M with feet. And then this cross is little m RT. And so if you want to solve for the molar mass of a gas, we have this cool equation, which I call Mr. T conquers over pervs. So Mr. T on the A team. Um, you can do this however you want, but I love this equation, and you'll see, I actually do this in, on purpose, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of these in a row, and so that you see how many times this equation comes up. Um, and so I'm going to grab my eraser, and I'm going to erase all of this. And by the way, this Mr. T conquers over pervs equation um, only works for, um, it only works for gases. All right, so here we go. Oh, sorry, grab my pen. Um, when it says, what is the molar mass of the unknown gas, that's the only time you use this equation. Um, Mr. T conquers over pervs. 
There's lots of ways you can do this, but the unknown gas, we just in part C figured out that that was 1.37 grams. That's the mass of the unknown gas. Now I'm going to do this slightly different. Um, since they did the test revision in 2013, the value of um, R they're using nowadays is 0 0.08206. It used to be 0 0.0821. They're giving us an extra sig fig. And then this has weird units. It's atmospheres times liters over mole times K. So if you look at the scoring guidelines, they're going to have 0 0.0821 here. Uh, the temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. So 273 plus 23 looks to me like this is 296K. So this is 296K, and then K cancels K. And then P is downstairs. And now this is interesting. Um, this is in atmospheres, but they gave us the pressure in tors. Oh, you know what? I forgot that. I think I might want to do over on this one. There's a couple ways you can do this. A tor is a millimeter of mercury. Um, you could convert. Um, tors two millimeters of mercury or you could just use the r value um, that's in tors oh, interesting we can do this a bunch of ways i think i'm going to swap this out sorry um, because on your formula sheet they do give you the fact that r is and remember you're always supposed to pick your value of r based on um, what your pressure unit is so 62.4 mmHg is a tor. They changed the name. Um, they named this after um, a guy named Torcelli who did pioneering work in pressure. Uh, millimeters of mercury times liters over mole K. Um, and still K cancels K. And now pressure is downstairs. So if you go back, we gotta go back two slides. I'm pretty sure this was, um, the pressure was 750 tor. And so then this is 750 tor. Interesting because tor or millimeters of mercury cancels tor and K cancels K. And then also, V is downstairs, and I think this is 0.843 liters. Let me go back two slides and check. I think it drives me crazy on this. Um, yeah, 843 milliliters. Um, and so what happens here is, and the beauty of this is, you'll figure this out, everything cancels except grams in the top and moles in the bottom, which is awesome because we're solving for molar mass and so if you do that on your calculator and you do 1.37 times 62.4 times 296 divided by 750 divided by 0.843 the calculator says exactly um 40.0228 grams per mole and i would say three sig figs 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 they probably want three sig figs so 40.0 grams per mole um um, after the experiment was completed, the instructor informed the student that the molar mass, that the unknown gas was carbon dioxide, 44 grams per mole. Calculate the percent error. I love this problem because we've done percent error a lot. Percent error is the absolute value of lab minus lit over lit times 100. Um, if you come down here, um, they got 40. They were supposed to get 44.0 divided by 44.0. Remember on percent error, you can um, drop units because they all canceled. Now, when you subtract here, you count decimal places. So 40.0 minus 44.0 ends up being 4.0. It's actually negative 4.0, but the absolute value bars make it positive divided by 44.0. Now when we divide, we count sig figs. This had two, this had three, we get three. So four, 
um, on my calculator, 4 divided by 44 times 100 is, um, my calculator is showing, oops, I got to extend the page, um, I would have 9.0, sorry, it's 9.090909 dot 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 percent. Um, we get two sig figs, I'd have 9.1%. Interesting, we're going to see a little problem with, um, I think, the scoring guidelines. Okay, so then right here, we got 44.0 grams per mole, just like they did. Um, they converted um, TOR to atmospheres. But what I really think is interesting is, um, I don't know why they have, oh, um, they used 40.1, and I'm using 40, because that's what I got. So they have 8.9%, but we used 40.0, which is why we got 9.1%. Okay, now these last two problems, or these next two problems, I think are quite tricky. So here's the deal. For each of the following two possible occurrences, indicate whether by itself it could be responsible for the error in the student's experimental result. You need not include any calculations with your answer. For each possible occurrence, justify your answer. So the question is, um, so I'm going to do this. Mr. T conquers over pervs, and here's the question. If it was incompletely flushed with CO2, that means the mass of the gas wasn't CO2. It was a mixture of CO2 and air. And earlier in this problem, I talked about that air weighs less than CO2. So if this happened, it would make the actual mass um, less. Okay, so what would happen is this mass would be um, less um, the mass of the, this mass would be less than the mass of pure CO2. That's in the numerator. And so if this happens, if this mass is smaller than it should be, that means that it makes the molar mass um, smaller than it should be. So if the mass um, in the, is too small, and mass is in the numerator, it makes the molar mass of the gas too small. And that would cause the molar mass to be low. This could have occurred for it, because remember, we're supposed to get 44 grams per mole, and we only got 40.0 grams per mole. We're low. And so could the fact, could this error have caused it to be too low? And the answer is yes, because the mass in the, if you incompletely flushed it, you would be, the mass that you weighed would be smaller than it should be. Now this one's kind of tricky. Let's go back again. The molar mass of the gas is Mr. T conquers over pervs. Now the question is, um, the temperature of the air was 23, but the temperature of the CO2 was lower than 23. So what happened is they are using a temperature of 23 here for the mass of the carbon dioxide. But the temperature of the carbon dioxide was actually lower than 23 degrees Celsius. And so what happens is they are multiplying by a number that's too big. It's not 23. It's actually something like 19. And this T is too big. It's in the numerator. That would make the molar mass too big. And that could not account for the error. Our error is we were too low. So no, this could not uh, be responsible. for the error. All right, and then the last question, um, describe 
the steps of a laboratory method that the student could use to verify that the volume of the rigid flask was 843 milliliters. You need not include any calculations. You know, the best way I would do this is I would take your flask. You remember, a flask has a neck. So here's my really bad drawing of an Erlenmeyer flask. I would fill it up to the very top with water. So fill the flask to the top with water. We'll do that first and then um, pour the contents of the flask into um, a thousand mil graduated cylinder and and check to see that the volume is 843 milliliters, something like that. Um, you could also fill it up with water and weigh it to be out of um, balance that went up that high because the density of water is one grams per milliliter. There's lots of different answers to this question.